a companion who is not very well known. His name is not amongst the top names of the companions, but his story is one of the most touching stories we will have. By the name of Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiyallahu an. What is his story? He says, I was a young man in Mecca, and after the battle of Badr, I noticed the people of Quraysh had got hold of a certain companion of Muhammad وسلم, by the name of Khubayb ibn Adi radiyallahu an. And I was a young boy in Mecca, not yet a Muslim. This was after the battle of Badr. And they were dragging him and they took him to Tan'im. Tan'im today is where Masjid Aisha uh, is or Masjid Umrah, they call it. It's a place known as Tan'im, just on the outskirts of the Haram in Mecca. So he says they were dragging him, they were beating him and they were about to execute him. They had a little crucifix which they wanted to hang him on and so on. And they said, we're going to kill this man because of who has been killed in the battle of Badr. And yet Khubayb ibn Adi was an innocent man. The only sin he committed was he was a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So Saeed ibn Amir al Jumah he says, I was watching, I was a young man. And I saw as they beating him up, he asked them one question. He says, look, before you hang me, before you execute me, can I read two units of prayer, two rakaat of prayer? They said, okay. So he, he washed with a bit of water and Saeed says, Saeed ibn Amir al Jumah, he says, we were all watching him and he faced the Qibla and he started his salah and he read a beautiful salah without any worry, like nobody's going to beat him up ever. And so he took his time, he finished the salah and he looks at the people of Quraysh who were now ready with their knives, their knives and their axes and whatever. And he looked at them and said, you know, I would have lengthened my prayer had I not been worried that you would start saying this man is scared of death because it is not death that I am scared of. It's the way I die. Subhanallah. The way I die, meaning he wants Allah to be pleased with him. That's why he read his salah. Anyway, the people were shocked. This man, they only told him disbelieve in Muhammad. He says, no, no ways. So they started cutting up his organs whilst he was alive. Na'udhu billah. Men, women, everyone involved in this. And Saeed says, I was in the forefront. I didn't engage in it. But just when they were about to hang him, finally, when he was about to die, I heard him say a few words. They asked him a question. Wouldn't you like Muhammad وسلم, to be in your place? And he said, Wallahi, no matter what you do to me, and no matter what happens to me, I would not allow even a thorn to prick Muhammad وسلم. And this Saeed ibn Amir says, I was shocked. This man loves the other man so much. There must be something about it. And he says, as he was dying, he says, Allahumma ahsihim adada, waqtulhum badada, wala tatruk minhum ahada. Oh Allah, it's a dua that was made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam previously as well. And this dua was repeated here by Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu anhu, saying, oh Allah, gather all of these, punish all of them and don't leave even one of them for what they are doing. Who were those? The people of Quraysh. So this man, Saeed ibn Amir says, the story was over. The people of Quraysh went back. They killed the man. He was gone, but I couldn't sleep. When I stand up, I see this man, Khubayb ibn Adi in front of me. When I sleep, I dream of him. I have nightmares. I get up. When I'm walking, I remember his words and it harassed me so much. And I thought to myself that this cannot be something simple. There is some deep belief behind this. What is it? The love that he has for his religion must be meaning that this religion has something deep in it. Because if people had a slight doubt in their belief, they would have given it up. And the love he has for this man, he can only be a messenger. Because if it was any ordinary person, even a father would not do this for the son and the son would not do this for the father. Subhanallah. So he says, I started asking myself, there must be something from the heavens that, you know, that is that has come. And one day I got up because I could not take all these thoughts anymore. And I stood in front of Quraysh and told him, Oh Quraysh, I free myself from what you did to Khubayb ibn Adi some time back. And I, I am not a part of you anymore. The idols you are worshipping are wrong. I am going to Medina and I accept the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This was our man, Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. It shook him to the core. He went to al Madinah and Munawwara and mashallah, he spent time there. It is reported that he took part in the battle of Khaybar and whatever happened thereafter. Then here comes his story. 
He lived during the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhu and he used to advise them. He told Umar ibn al-Khattab one day, Oh Umar, be careful of how you treat your people and be careful you have been made an Amir. You need to make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities and so on. They used to know him as a very pious man who was not interested in the worldly material life. So one day Umar ibn al-Khattab calls him and says, You know what? I want to appoint you as the governor of Hems. Hems is in Syria today. May Allah grant peace and stability in all the Muslim lands. I mean, so this man says, no, I will not be the governor of Hems. Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu an. So Umar ibn al-Khattab says radiallahu an, you people appointed me as an Amir and now you don't want to support me and you don't want to do what I'm telling you to do. So he decided, okay, let me go to Hims. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, okay, we're going to send you a monthly stipend, a salary. He says, I don't need a salary. I am a person whom whatever I have is enough. If you give me something, it's going to be excess. Rather, you leave it in Baytul Mal, you know, with the wealth of the Muslims and give it to the poor. So he refused to take anything. So what happened is, after some time, subhanallah, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu met a few people from Hims. And he told them, we want you to write the names of the poorest of people from amongst you so that perhaps we can send them some wealth. So the people of him started writing names and the names came to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And from amongst them, he saw Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. He said, who is this Saeed ibn Amir? So they said, he is the governor. What? He is the governor. His name is from amongst the poorest of the lot. Yes. So immediately Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu sent him 1000 gold coins. And, in a, and wrote a note for him, sent it to him. It got to him in him, subhanallah. Something worth make, making mention of Saeed ibn Amr al-Jumahi radiallahu an. When he saw the note and the coins, he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So his wife tells him, did the Amir pass away? No, something worse than that. So his wife says, did the Muslims lose in battle? No, something worse than that. So the wife says, well, what has happened? He says, materialism has entered my life in order to destroy my hereafter. Subhanallah. She did not know about the coins yet. So she said, well, why don't you get rid of it? Now he looks at her and says, will you help me get rid of it? She says, by all means. So then he said, here's the thousand coins. And she looked at it and she said, well, now I have to help him because you know, Subhanallah, he was a man. Wallahi, we will cry when we hear the next part of his story. He was a man who served his family so much that we have to learn a lesson from it. We think we're a big deal, CEOs of companies and so on. We come home and give instruction. Listen to what the governor of Hems did. Anyway, he put that money into little, little pouches and he distributed it amongst the poor in Hems. Subhanallah. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu came up to Asham in the 15th year of Hijrah. And it is reported that again, he, he went to Hems and so on or some parts of Asham, And he asked the people of Hims, how is your Khalifa? How is your Amir? The, the one I sent to you, how is he? So they complained a lot. So he, he decided to call Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. The people have complaints about you. And the people were seated and he brought this man in front of them. He was a very calm, collected man. So Amir al-Mu'mineen says, right, what are your complaints? They mentioned four things. Point number one. This man does not come out to us until late in the morning. You know, when the sun is almost in, in its zenith, that's when, they, that's when he comes out. Meaning late in the morning, he doesn't come out early. Complaint number one. So, Umar radiallahu anhu says, Oh Saeed ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, what do you have to say? He says, Oh Amir, I don't have a servant at home. So every morning, I cook the food and I make sure that I bake the bread and I make sure that I've done everything in the house. Then I make my wudu and then I come out to see the people. Wallahi, they were stunned. They were shocked because even the poor of the lot, they didn't cook on their own. This man used to cook for his family and for everyone else. And he was the governor of him. Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu an. So Umar ibn al-Khattab looked at them and said, what's the other complaint you have? They said, the second complaint is at night, he doesn't respond. When we have a problem at night, we knock his door. He never answers his door. So Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumah, he says, Wallahi, O oh Umar, I don't want to disclose what I do. But I just want you to say, I just want you to know that the day is for my people and the night is for Allah. 
which means the man is in prayer. What do you want him to do? Someone knocks. You know, today we, we ring the phone. Someone doesn't answer. We get so irritated. We think they are ignoring us. We start a war. In fact, we stop talking to them for the rest of our lives without knowing the man was probably in the loo. Sorry, not the loo, because nowadays they answer the toilet even in the loo. May Allah grant us forgiveness. Wallahi. What bad habits do we have? So this was Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. So he looked at them and said, what's your next complaint? They said, Wallahi, this man, one or two days of the month, he just doesn't come out at all. So Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi says, you know, O Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, I've only got one pair of clothes and that's what I'm wearing here. So one of the days I need to wash the clothing. So I wash it and then I have to wait until it dries. Subhanallah. When it dries, then I can wear it. And by that time it's evening. So I come out the next day. Subhanallah. They were stunned, completely taken aback. The people of Hems. And what happened is, what is your next complaint, O people? So the last complaint, they said, sometimes this man, he loses concentration whilst we're talking to him. And it's as though he's unconscious for a little while. Then he gains consciousness and he asks us what we said. And this being our governor is something that is wrong with this man. So they, he asked Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi al that what is your answer for this? He says, Wallahi, O Umar, I can never forget a certain day in my life when one of the companions of Muhammad وسلم, by the name of Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu an was killed in front of me in Quraysh. And he described the whole story. I'm not going to repeat it here because I've just said it now. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was in tears. And the Sahaba were in tears. And the people of Hims were in tears. He says, Wallahi, I worry all the time I was with him. Why didn't I help him? I wonder if Allah will forgive me for that day when I allowed one of the companions to be martyred in front of me. And that was Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu anhu. And subhanallah, this was the man this was the man, Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu an, worth talking about. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu hugged him. They cried. And later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu sent him another thousand coins. And this time his wife said, Alhamdulillah, we've got a thousand coins. You no longer need to work, nor do I. We can employ someone. So he says, oh, my beloved wife, why don't we do something even better than that? So she says, what is it? He says, let us distribute this wealth to those who need it more than us. And he definitely did that. They agreed and that's what they did. This was the man. It was worth making mention of him. We have so much lesson from this man. The men, the women and the children of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these heroes of ours.